prophet Isaiah said, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And above him flew the seraphim, two on either side, and each had six wings. With two they covered their face, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And they called out to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds of the temple shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. And Isaiah says, And I cried out, Woe is me! Woe is me! I am ruined! Woe is me! I am undone, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar, and with it he touched my mouth. And he said, see, this has touched your lips. Your sin is atoned for and your guilt is taken away. Your sin is atoned for and your guilt is taken away. Your sin is atoned for and your guilt is taken away. And then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I. Send me. This is the account of Isaiah, the prophet's encounter with God that resulted in his being called as a prophet of God. It's found in Isaiah chapter 6. Uh, I'd encourage you to turn there in your Bibles. We're going to reference this uh, story. If you don't have a Bible with you, there's some in your seats. You can grab one of those, turn to page 678. You'll find that. But like Isaiah, we are here whether you've joined us in person or online, to encounter the living God. We're here to meet God. Now, some of you are Jesus followers already. You believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world. You believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sins. You you believe that he was raised from the dead, and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, just like Michael and Jamie did. You've said, Jesus, I'm yours, I'm following you, and you came here or you tuned in here with the expectation that you would worship the living God, that you would meet him in some way, shape, or form tonight. Today, you want to meet God. And you want to meet God because God's already changed your life. You know he's real, you know he's alive, you know he's powerful, and you're looking for that experience. But some of you are here for other reasons. Some of you are here out of desperation. I mean, your life has been broken. It's been tragically uh, upset, maybe by your own choices, maybe by somebody else's actions. Maybe you got bad news from the doctor, or maybe your finances just took a hit. But you are wondering, can God redeem my life? You came here looking for an answer, looking for hope, looking for the possibility that God could do something but you want to encounter the living God. Now, some of you are here just seeking. You really want to know if this Jesus stuff is real. Maybe this is your first time in church in decades, or maybe you've been coming to church your whole life, and you're still wondering if it's real. And you want to understand what it means to follow Jesus. Look, whatever your reason for for being with us, in person or online, Our desire is that you encounter God in a real and powerful way. So that demands the question, what happens if we encounter God in a real and powerful way? What happens if God reveals himself to us? Well, the prophet Isaiah's account gives us an example. First thing that happens when we encounter the living God, it results in a life-changing experience, a life-altering experience. We are not the same when that happens. I mean, we see that with Isaiah. Now, Isaiah had a dramatic, mystical encounter with God. He says, I literally saw the Lord. He encountered angels, and there was smoke, and there was earthquakes. And here's the thing, it changed his life forever. 
He served God as a prophet 700 plus years before Jesus was born. That was his role, that was his calling, that was his life. See, I'm pretty sure you can't have an authentic experience with the living God and remain the same. I'm pretty sure that you're not going to have this, this in-person experience with God and then just kind of go, eh, that was nice. Whatever. Next. You, you know, you're just not going to, you can't be ambivalent about an experience with the living God. I know I couldn't be. You see, I had my, my first life-changing encounter with God when I was 16. I was already a believer in Jesus. I'd been raised to believe in Jesus. And can I just tell you, there were no visions. There were no angels. There was no smoke or earthquakes or anything like that. I was just listening to Bible studies at youth camp. And, and, and they sent us out for a forced quiet time, you know, where they said you can't talk to anybody. You just got to read the paper and answer the questions. And I was out standing by a pine tree just by myself, and I, I tried this prayer thing. And I ended up praying something like this, God, I don't really like who I am. Don't really like where my life is going. You love me. You created me. Let's see if you can do better leading my life than I can. And he answered that prayer. But that was an experience with God that changed my life. So have you had a life-altering experience with God? Have you encountered him in a real way? See, I think if you have, it's changed your life. And if you have, since nobody really responded, yes. <laughs> I'm assuming that a lot of you are like answering inside quietly, okay? But if you have, then uh, the next time you're together with your friends or your family or your life group and sharing a meal or, or just sharing some time, then share how God has uh, changed your life. Share the experience that you had, the encounter that you had that was life-altering. Because there's some people who need to hear that. Because there's some people who need to experience God in a real way. But, uh, but when you meet Jesus face to face, he changes your life. And when God changes your life, when you meet him face to face, we respond with repentance or rebellion. It's going to be one or the other. Did, did you catch Isaiah's repentance? Verse 5, woe is me. I am lost, I am ruined, I am undone. Those are all different words used in that place of, of despair as he cries out uh, different translations, English translations, uh, just trying to capture this angst of his spirit saying, I am not who I'm supposed to be. I, I'm in a desperate place. Now think about this. He says, I'm a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. This was the guy who was gonna be a prophet. Let me say it again. This is a guy who was going to be the mouthpiece of God on the earth to the king of Israel. And he says, I, my lips are unclean. In fact, everybody around me is unclean. How, how can I do this? How can I be in the presence of God? He repented. See, the truth is, when we're in the presence of God, our sin is exposed by his holiness. When we are in the presence of God, we cannot be unaware of our filth, of our sin, of our rebellion, of all the stuff in our life. Can I, can I just be honest with you? That's why when we are rebelling against God, it's uncomfortable to come into his house. That's why when we're living in rebellion, we avoid turning on you know, Christian music. That's why when we're living in rebellion, we don't want to pick up the Bible and read it because when we encounter the presence of God, it exposes our sinfulness. It makes us aware. It's, it's kind of like this. We walk into the light of Jesus and we see the filth on our hands and the, the darkness in our heart is exposed. And in that moment... In that moment, when, when you become aware of your sinfulness because you're in the presence of the Holy God, one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to fall to your knees and repent or you're going to run out of there and rebel. Every one of us has that reaction. We step into the light or we hide in the darkness. We choose confession or we proclaim our innocence. We blame somebody else, make excuses. You see, Isaiah, he confessed. He repented and he was forgiven. Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but he was painfully forgiven. 
I mean, an angel flew with a live coal. We're talking about burning coal from the altar and touched his mouth with it, symbolizing the, the purity that God was bringing to him, symbolizing the, the atonement that was coming to him. So what I want to say to you is this. If you come to that place where you go, I'm going to repent, confession is not an easy path. Now, on one hand, it's really easy because when we confess our sins, God is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and purify us of all unrighteousness. Okay, that's his promise, and he does it. But confession is not painless. It is not easy. But it is the path to freedom. It's the path to freedom. Now, I, I, I am glad God did not have to burn my mouth off for me to preach. Okay, I, I read this, and I'm thankful. But I also understand that Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross to pay for my sins, to purify my tongue, to, to make it so that I can speak for God because it's by his grace that all of my sins are forgiven and all of your sins are forgiven. But Jesus had to suffer so that I could be forgiven and so that you could be forgiven. See, that's why confession, it's still not easy, but it is the way that we go because our sins are atoned for by the blood of Jesus, not burning coals. Your sins are atoned for by the blood of Jesus, not your good deeds. Our sins are atoned for by the blood of Jesus, not silver or gold or money or, you know, doing anything for, to be known. So here's the question that every one of us needs to struggle with. And I say every one of us because it's true. If you encounter the living God today, what is your heart inclined to do? To repent or to rebel? Because you're going to make a choice for one or the other. And, and God is going to make it really obvious. In fact, right now, I'm just going to go ahead and go out on a limb. That if you're a follower of Jesus, the Holy Spirit is already nudging you uncomfortably at this moment. Because we're talking about confession and repentance. And saying, hey, you know that thing that you've been saying you're going to give up for about the last, I don't know, 100 years? You know, the thing that you repent of uh, every week, sometimes every day? That thing that you're keeping secret from Everybody who could be praying for you? Oh, see, that, uh, now, now we're getting uncomfortable, aren't we? Because we'll confess to God, but we don't want to acknowledge our sin to anybody else. We don't want anybody else to know about our stuff. Those are the people who can help us. The Apostle James says, confess your sins one to another and pray for each other that you might be healed. If you want freedom, it's found in confession. It's not found in secrets. That's why I love our recovery ministries, because they get honest about who we are and what we're struggling with. And if you want freedom, you've got to embrace that. And you've got to go, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm going to admit it. And since some of you need, to, you need to find somebody that you can be honest with and say, hey, uh, help me. I've got a problem with pornography, and, and, and it's owned to me. And it's killing me, and it's killing my marriage. And some of you need to say, hey, I have a problem with, with alcohol or drugs, and nobody knows about it, and it's killing me, and it's owning me. See, confession is a whole lot healthier than discovery. And confession is the path to freedom. Um, so today, if God reveals himself to you, you're going to choose repentance or rebellion. Because uh, you'll have to choose. You will have to choose. So when we encounter God, it makes us aware of sinfulness. And then if we repent of our sin, if we repent of our sin, then... God invites us to serve him. God invites us to serve him. Did you, th this, this passage is so powerful and so beautiful. Isaiah is fresh off of falling on his face, begging for mercy, confessing his sinfulness and, and getting his mouth burned off. And God then says, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And, and he lets that question just linger and Isaiah is there and you know he's not looking around thinking is anybody else here no God's talking to him and Isaiah says here am I send me I volunteer I'll do this and God chooses him God uses him God sends him see this is such an amazing truth the God of all creation invites us invites you and invites me to serve him now, if you grew up in church, the legalistic variety, the kind that kind of felt like serving God was punishment, like spiritual community service, you got to do your time. 
Kind of felt like that sometimes when I was growing up. You know, it's like, hey, you have to go do this. All right, we got to go to church. We got to go knock on doors. We got to go do stuff. Uh, and, and we had to. No. Serving God is we get to. God says, whom shall I send who will go for us? And uh, he's looking for volunteers. He's not looking for conscription. He's, he's asking us, hey, are you going to... Are you going to do this? Who wants to do this? And, and by the way, if you are a follower of Jesus, you've already signed up. Last time I checked, uh, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. But if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, guess what you just did? You signed up. You said, Jesus, you're my master. I'm your servant. I'm yours. I, I want to be yours. I want to I do your work. And God's already given us our primary assignment, every one of us, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you, and I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. It's called the Great Commission. God's given it to every one of us who are his followers, and it's our responsibility to share with people that we know and people we don't know the good news that Jesus Christ can forgive their sins and save their souls. Okay, uh, that's good news. I think it's great news. I think everyone ought to know it. I think everyone ought to hear it. I think everyone ought to be invited. But here's the thing. I don't know everybody. Neither do you, but together we do. Yeah. See, it, 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 this is not a preacher thing, a prophet thing. This is not a deacon thing or a teacher thing. This is an us thing, the body of Christ thing. Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And God is waiting to know if you're going to answer Yes. All right, who's going to go to your family and your friends? See, they don't know me, and if they met me, they might not even like me. <laughs> can, I, can I just tell you a secret? And some of you know this because you used to be uh, one of these people, but unchurched people are not comfortable around preachers. Okay? Some of you know what I'm talking about because you used to be unchurched people, and God changed your life, and you're like, now I like preachers, but back then, you know... I don't want to be around them. They're not going to, they don't want to listen to me. They want to listen to you. They trust you. They know you. You're the one that God has appointed to speak into their lives to invite them to come and hear the good news and see how God can change their life. So if Jesus has changed your life, you've experienced grace, then the next step is to serve. It's to serve Jesus. By the way, can I just confess that I am skeptical of spiritual experiences that don't lead to spiritual service. I, I'm, just, I'm just being honest with you. I, I, through the years, I've had people tell me all about their experience with God. God told me this. God revealed himself to me in this great way. And, and some of them are, are, are living for Christ and making a difference in this world. And some of them aren't. And, and what I want to say, and I don't say it to your face, okay? So I'm just telling you right now, I'm confessing. I already talked about confession, right? What I want to say when somebody tells me about this really wild experience they had with God is, so what? So what? what? So what does that lead you to do? Because Isaiah had the coolest experience, right? Way cooler than anything we've had. And he ended up serving God for his lifetime as a prophet. Um, but if, you've had a, a, if God's revealed himself to you, then it's for a reason, and it's for you to serve not for you to just kind of go, hey, I had a really cool experience. And, and, and so when God shows up, he changes lives and he sends people to work. And you don't have to be super talented or super gifted or super special or a leader to say yes to Jesus. To say, yes, I'll go. My story. I was 17 years old when, when God called me into the ministry. And I was not influential. I was not cool. I was not, uh, you know... Uh, an influencer in any way, shape, or form. I was insignificant, I was unimportant, and I was unimpressive, and I was invisible, and I said, yes, here I am, send me. Okay, and, and God surprised me. Now, I didn't provide God with a blueprint for my life or my anticipated career path. I just surrendered and said yes. And, and God has completely surprised me in my life by letting me serve him, by allowing me to lead, and I am still amazed and in awe that I have the privilege of being the pastor of Calvary. Okay? And, and it's, a, a, it's an honor and a joy that I am still stunned by. But here's the thing. None of that happens unless we say yes. 
None of this happens unless you say yes. It doesn't happen in your life unless you say, yes, send me. I volunteer. And, and here's the thing. Many of you are already enthusiastic servant leaders who have said yes to Jesus, and you say yes every single day because you are serving on the weekends. You're, you're making this all happen in all different kinds of ways. And, and some of you are working with children, and some of you are working with students. And, and some of you are, you know, running tech, and some of you are welcoming people, and, and you're making it happen. And, and some of you are on mission during the week in the community, and you're blessing people in Jesus' name. And, and, and some of you are, are inviting your friends and your family, and you're doing ministry that way, just, just encouraging people to find Jesus. So some of you have already said yes. And you're probably the ones cheering me on, going, yeah, <laughs> preach it. Some of you have actively said no. You've said, not interested, not going to do it. Whatever your reason is, you've said no, but, you know, Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. I may not agree with your decision, but you've made a decision. But a lot of us have responded with silence. God has said, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And you're looking around waiting for someone else to volunteer. Well, today... God is still inviting. Whom shall I send and who will go for us? What is your response going to be? See, I pray that you will say yes. Let's pray. Father, we love you. And we are amazed at your love for us. We're amazed that you reveal yourself to us in powerful and real ways. And God, my prayer right now is that if there's anybody in this room that, that has not said yes to the person of Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, if there's anybody who's tuning in that hasn't yet given their life over to you and surrendered to you as Savior and Lord, that right now they would choose to do that. They would make that commitment and they would take that leap of faith and say, Jesus, I'm yours, I believe. I follow. But God, all of us want to encounter you. We want to experience you in a real way, in a powerful way. And so my prayer is that you would reveal yourself to us, for us, with us, that we would hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives, convicting us of sin, calling us to repentance, and inviting us to serve. So God, my prayer is for us as a church and for us as individual followers of Jesus that we will say yes to you because you have sacrificed everything for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.